And here we go again. Caitlin Clark. Look at this. Not a play on the ball by Angel Reese. Hey, Shaq. You know, I'd lay off her. She's just so goddamn dirty. Like, not going for the ball at all. What is this? Just an absolute cheap shot. Angel Reese. Chicago Sky. Dirtiest players in the game. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. We got to talk about the WNBA once again because the drama never stops with this league full of women, okay, who seem to specialize in drama. I think the drama is more entertaining than the actual basketball, to be quite honest with you. But hey, once again, we're, we're back, okay? We're talking about what a lot of people are calling another cheap shot on Caitlin Clark. Uh, when she plays the Chicago Sky, which is Angel Reese's team, in which you guys remember the cheap shot seen around the world on Caitlin Clark by Trinity Carter, and the Chicago Sky got a whole lot of backlash from it. And ever since then, the woke WNBA players, along with the mainstream liberal media, has been calling the fans racist, right? If you are a fan of Caitlin Clark, you are racist. If you defend C Caitlin Clark against cheap shots by these jealous WNBA players, then you are a racist. This is what they're saying, okay? So now uh, we're going to have more accusations of racism here because, again, you have a lot of people defending Caitlin Clark from what appears to be another cheap shot, or at least that's what a lot of people are calling this, that happened in a rematch uh, between the Chicago Sky and Indiana Fever, where once again, the Indiana Fever, led by Caitlin Clark, won the game 91-84. Uh, Caitlin Clark had 23 points, 8 rebounds, 9 assists, almost a triple-double, uh, plus 10, plus minus. Uh, she played an amazing game. She hit some big shots uh, at key moments. Uh, the stadium was full, okay? It was a ton of people there. So it seems, I was like, wow, this stadium looks uh, more full than... An NBA game, right? I think there are more people that are now watching Caitlin Clark than some of these NBA games, okay? That is how much of a star she is in the WNBA. She is literally the league MVP, and it seems as if, again, these jealous WNBA players are trying to hurt the league MVP, and that's what a lot of people are saying about this play right here. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and play it. So, yeah, this is Angel Reese just clotheslining. Clotheslining right here. Clotheslining Caitlin Clark right in the head, right on the side of the face. <laughs> right? Just slap her in the face. Now, some people are saying this is assault. <laughs> okay. That's what they're saying. Yeah. I mean, wow. So, I mean, the refs call this a fragrant one, as they should have. Okay. Because, again, that was a hard foul. I mean, she just slapped Caitlin Clark across the head. Um, but I won't go as far as to say it was dirty or it was a cheap shot. And the reason why is because it technically is during the course of play. Okay. So you have Caitlin Clark going up for a, uh, layup and Angel Reese basically is beat, <laughs> right? And instead of accepting defeat that, Hey, I got beat by Caitlin Clark. Instead, you know, she tries to play the ball. But she ends up slapping Caitlin Clark in the head instead, okay? I think it's a poor play by Angel Reese, but I'm, I wouldn't go as far as to say it's dirty. And I think that we have to be careful about calling all of these plays dirty because what happens is, is that it's going to seem like, well, any time that Caitlin Clark gets a hard foul, you know, her fans are saying that, oh, well, you know, they're trying to cheap shot her or whatever. And I'm not saying that they're not giving her a little extra oomph, right? Like, they're not going out there and trying to play her tough, okay, into, you know, rough her up, uh, maybe even intentionally commit hard fouls against her. I'm not saying they're not trying to do that. But again, if it's a basketball play, right, if it's doing the course of play, you know, you can't really complain about it too much, right? The refs, they call it a fragrant, and it is what it is, okay? I mean, you know, uh, Angel Reese got punished for it. This was not necessarily the same thing as the Kennedy uh carter a uh, cheap shot where that didn't happen during the course of play okay that was not a basketball play that was just uh trinity carter just saying hey i'm just gonna you know body check uh caitlin clark i'm just gonna shove her i'm just gonna assault her for no reason okay i don't think that this is the same thing even though uh angel reese was the same person that was celebrating and clapping at uh her teammate cheap shotting 
Caitlin Clark. So there's no doubt in my mind that, you know, hey, maybe there were some bad intentions behind this, but I just can't say for certain that it was an intentional cheap shot. It definitely probably was an intentional foul, but I'm not entirely sure if she intentionally wanted to smack Caitlin Clark in the face. But again, that's not really what this video is about, okay? What it really is about is the reaction to this fragrant foul and the difference between how Caitlin Clark responded versus how Angel Reese responded because Angel Reese uh, lashed out at uh, the media over this foul, right? She basically went out and accused uh, Caitlin Clark of having special privileges and that they're the ones that didn't get enough foul calls uh, and that, again, Caitlin Clark had some type of, I don't know, special treatment on the court that, you know, is designed to protect her uh, even when she gets clotheslined in the face. Angel, I want to get your assessment from the first half to the second half because the first half, you and Camilla were cooking in the first half there. But what happened in that second half? I mean, for inside, I mean, I think we were playing really hard. Um, I think we went out really strong a lot of times and we didn't get a lot of calls. And going back and looking at the film, I've seen a lot of calls that weren't made. I guess some people got a special whistle, but just being able to play hard as best as we can. Um, I'm still proud of Camilla going on still get a double-double. Um, that's something I'm not going to be able to stop them regardless of the referees. Like, we're here for a while. Um, we're not going to be denied, it's, it's, no matter what you guys can try to do. But our goal is to win, and we're going to do whatever it takes to win and continue to do that. Yeah, so the delusion of the WNBA is really something that should be studied in the history books, okay? Because I have never seen this much delusion on such a consistent basis in sports, right? Imagine thinking that Kaylin Clark has a special whistle when you are the one clotheslining her in the face, right? In the course of play, you are smacking a player in the face, and after the game, you lash out at that player and say, oh, well, she has a special whistle whistle she's getting special treatment because you got called for fouls right you got called for fouls that you clearly committed right like you're not allowed to smack people in the face during the game okay I understand that these girls aren't soft okay and they play bully ball and that they're rough okay I understand they want to prove that they're just like men okay but that's not a part of basketball getting smacked in the face uh, is not something that uh, players should just be able to get away with without being punished. Now, it happens. Doesn't mean that it's necessarily dirty when it's done on accident, when you're not doing it on purpose, because, again, it happens. But, but most certainly, uh, this foul call was deserved, okay, because Caitlin Clark was <laughs> fouled, as you can see here. She was smacked in the face by Angel Reese. But, again, according to Angel Reese, Caitlin Clark has the special whistle. Amazing. Amazing. Now, compare that to the response from Caitlin Clark when she was asked about this flagrant foul. And then when you get flagrant foul by Angel Reese, what's going through your mind? And how do you just stay within yourself to finish the game? What's going through my mind is I need to make these two free throws. That's all I'm thinking about. Um, it's just part of basketball. It is what it is. Um, you know, just trying to play, make a play on the ball and, and, and get the block. Um, but yeah, I mean, it happens. And uh, those. Those free throws when you have to shoot them with nobody at the line are kind of hard. So it's a little different than having people at the line. So I was just trying to, trying to focus on making those. And that, my friends, is the difference between a Caitlin Clark and an Angel Reese. This is why people are fans of Caitlin Clark. This is why people support her. is literally because of the way that she carries herself. It is vastly different than the way that a vast majority of the players in the WNBA carry themselves. And you can see it in interviews. In interviews, when Angel Reese loses, she finds a way to pull the victim card, no matter what it is. After she lost to Caitlin Clark during the NCAA tournament, she was out here boo hoo and crying, oh, what is me? I've been sexualized and victimized and terrorized and all these things because I'm a black woman, right? This is what she was saying. But yet, when you see Caitlin Clark lose or when something happens to her, she is not playing the victim card, right? She was asked about the flagrant foul. She could have took a shot at Angel Reese, but she didn't. She was just like, well, yeah, it's a part of the course of play. And what I was thinking about more than anything is making those free throws, right? Because that's what matters, <laughs> right? That's what matters is putting up points 
on the scoreboard so that you can win the game. And I'm thinking about that more so than anything else. She didn't accuse Angel Reese of doing it on purpose. She didn't play the victim card. She didn't do any of the things that probably some of these other WNBA players would have done had the roles been reversed. And that is the difference. She just showed you how to overcome adversity, right? When something bad happens to you, you don't boo-hoo whine and cry about it and blame the world. You do what you can do. You control what you can control and focus on the end goal, which is to win the game. On the other hand, uh, what Angel Reese does and what a bunch of these other WNBA players do, they instantly play the victim card. Anytime they face any adversity, the first thing they do is cry racism. Well, it's the white man's fault. It's MAGA. It's the Trump supporters. Everybody hate us because we're black women. That's not role model behavior. Playing the victim all the time is not role model behavior. Nobody wants to teach their kids to be victims. It's nothing worse than an athlete boohoo whining and crying victim. It's nothing worse than that. But as you can see here, this is the pattern of behavior from Angel Reese. Every time she loses, when things don't go her way, is oh, woe is me. Everybody hating on us. These people getting special treatment. All these things. This is what they do. And then they wonder why they're not that popular. <laughs> why people don't like them that much. It's because of stuff like this. The contrast is in your face. It's clear as day. The difference between a Caitlin Clark and an Angel Reese is night and day. And it doesn't have to do with race. It has everything to do with attitude, professionalism, and their mentality, how they carry themselves. It's really that simple. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.